Music was always something I was really moved by when I started, especially when I started hearing the singer-songwriters from the early 70s. I was like 11 years old. It's a very impressionable age to begin with. And when I heard Van Morrison and James Taylor and Joni Mitchell and Jackson Brown, I felt like I felt so moved by that music, I just inherently knew how personal it was. Um, because there was a lot of music before that time where the singers weren't the writers. But all of a sudden, there was something different happening in that music, and I was um, really touched by it. And it didn't take too long until I started to try to figure out, how do, how do you do this? How do you write music that makes people feel like that? Um, and how do you sing like that? So I just feel like I willed myself to be something that I admired and was so moved by as a kid. Um, I don't know how it happened in a way. It's all pretty magical and beyond articulation. I think I found my songwriting voice right around the time I went to Memphis and I came back from there after meeting this woman Muriel Davis Wilkins who I sing about in that song walking in Memphis. Um, I wrote a lot of the songs that became my first record after going to Memphis and meeting Muriel and listening to Al Green preach at his church. Um, when I got back home and wrote maybe half what turned out to be my first record, I felt after writing Memphis and a song called Silver Thunderbird that I had turned a corner as a writer and that I was getting closer to finding my voice, which really is just when you start to feel like you're not copying somebody else. It's hard to explain what there is about Memphis. It's just, a, I mean, for me, so much of the music I grew up loving, from Al Green to Elvis, Sun Records, High Records, um, just so much different blues, rhythm and blues, gospel, um, that's still in the air there, even though a lot of the greats are gone. Um, and I just felt like I wanted to go there and soak it up and see what would happen. I had no idea I would come away with that song, um, but it was one of those rare times when I went looking for inspiration and I found it. Getting shot back in 2005, it's, even when I say it now, it's, uh, it's almost hard to believe it happened. Um, I was on the road and uh, there was a guy who needed to get out of town, wanted our van, we had just finished a concert. And he tried to shoot the driver and grazed the driver's chin and hit me right in the left temple and went in, but missed my skull by like that much. So I had a lot of post-traumatic stress, but luckily um, no physical damage. So I actually watched them take out the bullet. Um, at first, it scared me and it made me feel very unsafe in the world. Um, but once I worked through that, it gave me a whole new appreciation for my career, which was actually something I had not prioritized in my life. I have four children. Um, they've always been the most important thing. They're who I base my schedule around. Um, and I think after that, though, I became more appreciative of the fact that I'm also here not just to be a dad, but to be a singer. And I wrote a record right after that happened called Join the Parade. And ever since I got shot, oddly enough, uh, I've toured more in the years prior, after that happened than in all the years before that happened. So um, you never know uh, what an event like that is gonna mean. I knew that I needed to get back on the road quickly because if I took a long time, um, it might be paralyzing. So I went back out there and I did what I, part of what I was put here to do, which is sing my songs. And that's what I've been doing. My first record is 25 years old as of last year. Um, and I put out not only demos from that record of Walking in Memphis and True Companion and other songs, but I also found about 13 or 14 old songs from before Walking in Memphis. Really before I thought I had found my songwriting voice, which you asked me earlier. Um, I found these songs I had totally forgotten about. And surprisingly enough, they weren't as bad as I thought. I really was starting to get somewhere even before the songs that made it onto my first record. And so I thought, maybe this is a good time to just let these go, you know. And so I, I didn't redo them, I didn't remix them, I didn't do anything. They're just as they were, very sort of, it's kind of a raw document. Some of the recordings I can tell I were just there's a cassette sitting on my piano 
It's not even in a studio. Um, but some of them are semi-produced, and I put it out and called it Careful What You Dream, which is the name of one of those songs. Um, so my newest record is really comprised of my oldest songs.